Hey everyone, Jangro here. Check this out. I've got this key in my hand. This is a Phoenix Crate, and it's gonna make your Minecraft server so much better. Now, Phoenix Crates has been a paid plugin for a while, and it was totally worth every penny. But here's the exciting news. They just released Phoenix Crates Lite, which has most of the features for free. And that's what I'm using here today. These crates bring gamification to your server. And if you've ever got hooked on a mobile app with the daily rewards or streak systems, you know exactly what I mean. It's that just one more or I'm almost there feeling that keeps players coming back. And these crates are like little surprise boxes that keep things interesting. And today I'm going to show you how to set them up using Phoenix Crates Lite. Before we get into it, let's talk about servers for a second. You know how when you host your server on your own PC, it's only running when your computer's on. If you want to play with friends, you have to open up your firewall, which isn't great for security. That's where a Minecraft hosting provider like Apex Hosting comes in. They've got servers that are always running, always fast, and you don't have to worry about any of the firewall stuff. You can get a server set up in five minutes or less. They even have one-click plugin installs, which makes setting up your Minecraft world super easy. If you want to try them out, use my link, jangro.com slash Apex. That helps support the channel. Thanks to Apex, and thank you for your support. All right, well, to install Phoenix Crates Lite, on your server, you just need to head over to the download page. You can find it on Spigot MC, but the download now link is going to take you over to the Phoenix store where you can just download. There's also a paid version, which gives you some more features. You can check that out on the website. I think the biggest difference is the number of crates you can create and some of the customizations you can do with animations and crate features. So it's nice that you can try it out, but it's definitely worth it to pay for the premium version. All right, just download that plugin and put it in your plugins directory in your server, restart it, and you're good to go. So in this video, we'll set up that starter crate. We'll create a new one from scratch and you'll see how easy it is. All right, let's make a brand new starter crate. First thing we wanna do is use the crates command, create, and give it a name. We'll just call this one starter. The other one I called starter crate. And now we can do slash crates editor. We get an in-game editor here that allows us to manage our crates completely. We can do all of this stuff without touching a config file. There is a config YML file in the Phoenix crates directory in your plugins folder. I think we'll take a quick look at that later to do one quick edit. So right here, we can click on the crates. There's some other things we can do, migrate from other crates plugins, uh, some add-ons and settings, reload the config if you happen to edit the config files. But let's just click on the crates button. I've got five crates here. I can also add a crate here instead of using the command, but I have reached the maximum limit for the light version. So I'm not going to be able to add a sixth crate without deleting these example crates. So we've got room to grow here. Just going to delete some examples. So the starter crate is the one I just created. We click on that and we have a bunch of menu options in here. You can edit the name, it's identifier. We can choose the block material. It doesn't have to look like a chest. It can look like anything. We can make it look like a shulker box or a player head. We can basically just pick anything here. Let's make it look like a shulker box just to be different. We can Customize animations, the hologram that's over the crate. You can set up milestones so that even though there are rewards, there are also milestones that like after 10 opens, you can get some an extra reward. You can configure previews and other options as well. The important things though are the rewards and the keys. Let's click on rewards and add some rewards. Now in this crate, I'm just going to add in a bunch of these items here, plus a pickaxe that I still need to create. So we can add the rewards one at a time by clicking this green add reward button. This spot up here allows us to decide what it looks like, although it will default to what the win items, one of the win items, which you can add by clicking here and you can have more multiple items in a reward. So I could put all of these items in a single reward and the player could get everything. Also add commands and more configurations about the percentage and such. We'll look at those things too. Let's go back and do this in bulk. And we can add multiple rewards all at once with on this screen. And I'm just going to add in all of these rewards. Look at items. We got an invalid reward because I clicked on that add reward box. So let's just right click on that to remove it. Let's grab a quick pickaxe. Now we'll enchant this breaking one and efficiency one. A nice, a nice starter pickaxe that is not too OP. Crates editor back in here and we'll edit our starter right here. Okay, now let's just do, do the single add reward to add this pickaxe in. So we're going to just put this win item in here. And it's got the display item and the win item configured with this pickaxe. And we want to make this very rare. So everything else has 100% percentage. Right click and go down by ones. Shift right click to go down by tens. And we'll give this a 20% percentage, whereas everything else has 100%. And we'll give this golden apple a lower percentage as well, 30. The percentages is kind of weird because 
everything is at 100%, but only one of them is chosen. So they're, everything with 100% is evenly distributed. And then the some of these other ones are offered up lower. There's some math here, but we'll be able to look at it when we preview the chest itself. And we're basically there. We can edit the animations. There's the idle animation. We can choose some different effects. And there's the opening animation. And we can choose crack animation, light. I think that's supposed to say lightning. Key opener. And then there's some premium animations as well. We'll leave the things as the defaults. And then there's first phase, second phase, and third phase animations. Some pretty cool stuff you can do here. So let's just put this thing down and see what it looks like. So to do that, we do crates, give crate, starter, which is this one I just created. And we put it down. Just right click to put it down. So if we do left click to preview it, we can see percentage. So the most of the food here is 100%, and the chance is 11.76% because there are 10 items, but some of them, they don't all have 100% chance on them or percentage. But the pickaxe, we have a 2.35% of chance of getting that, whereas the, and the apple, 3.53, and the other ones are 11.76. Now to open it, we need a key to this chest. If you try to open it, there's a knockback on it, which you can also configure in the config file. Let's give ourselves the key for the starter. Just gotta put the player name. There we go, we have a starter key. We can open this up and watch what happens. And we got raw cod. I'm gonna give myself 10 more keys and we can try this out some more. Let's see what we get. We get 10 chicken. 20 baked potatoes, 10 carrots. Oh, we got a pickaxe. Some carrots. I'm wondering why I'm getting 20 of some of these things, but I actually have 20 baked potatoes and 20 cod in here. So that is why I meant to just put 10 in. All right, creating a crate is as simple as that. Just create the crate, edit it, put the stuff in it, make a key, and you've got it. Crates are cool and all but they're not much use if players can't open them and we need to get keys into the hands of the players. I don't wanna just be handing them out manually to all my players. Let's talk about some ways you can give out keys to your players without doing it manually and making it fun and interesting to keep coming back to play on your server. So there are a number of plugins that you can add to your server that do things based on events, time played, achievements, and things like that. For example, you can set up a plugin that rewards players for time spent on the server. You can set up a group of reward chests increasing in size and, and in value for someone who spends an hour, and then maybe 10 hours, and then maybe 30 hours on the game or something like that. That'll keep them coming back. You can set up rewards based on achievements. So just, you know, say somebody gets some obsidian, you can give them a key based on you know, those advancements and those sorts of things. There's voting plugins, so you can reward your users for voting. You can also allow them to purchase the keys through your in-game economy. And I've got Essentials X and Luck Perms installed so far on my server here. So I'm going to do a few things, set them up right now to give new players a key so that they can understand why this is cool and interact with the with a starter crate. Then I'm gonna set it up so that they can buy some keys based on the in-game economy, which will encourage them to go out and mine, get some items that they can sell, all right? So let's first look at setting up how to give a key to a new player using Essentials X. Okay, now quickly going into my config files, open up the paper server folder, plugins. We want to go into Essentials and the config.yml, edit that with notepad++. And way down, down here in Essentials X, spawn and new players. And I give new players a kit called Starter. And back into the Essentials folder, I open up the kits YML file. And in here I have a kit called Starter that gives these stone tools to a new user. We can give, we can run a command in a kit as well. So I'm going to add the crates give key starter to the username. And I'll save that. And while we're here, let's take a look quickly at the Phoenix crates config, which is really simple. You can configure the knockback and the render radius of crates, but where the important stuff is, is really in the crates folder in here. Now here's my starter crate. And if we look at this, we can see here, we can edit all of these things that we can edit inside the in-game menu. What I want to do is edit the key and change, this is a lore line, which is default text to find a starter crate. And that's going to change the text on the key to be something more useful. So, so a new user enters the game, they get a key. They're not gonna know what that is. So we're just gonna put some text here to help them out. So we'll save this. 
Oh, and again, so all the stuff in the in-game editor ends up in these um, in this YML file, which is really complicated, which is why the in-game editor is so useful. However, editing stuff like this text is a little bit easier once you've already created the crate. All right, I'm gonna restart the server, jump back in the game, and we can take a look at what we just did. Okay, back in the game, server restarted. Let's take a look at the editor again, crates editor, and see what we did here. We can edit the starter crate, and looking at the keys, we can see here, the lore on this key has been edited to find a starter crate like we edited in the config file. We can do all this editing in here, but again, a little bit easier maybe in the config file. I edited the hologram on this starter crate similarly. I just said open it with a starter key instead of the default text. And now we can see over here that it has this different hologram text on top. Okay, now let's get ourselves a starter kit. I'm obviously not a newbie. I've already joined the server, so I'm not gonna get a starter kit like that. So let's do that with a sign. And this is Essentials X signs. We type kit, starter. This will give us a starter kit, not a starter crate. This is about kits, that kit I configured in the config files. And now if I right click on the sign, I'm gonna going to get the starter kit. And here we go. I've got a starter key and you can see the key now has this find a starter crate text in it, as well as the other tools I got from that starter kit. Obviously, we're not going to want to put a sign like this in our game so that they can just get starter kits over and over again. Now let's change this sign and make this a kit that gives us the starter kit and it's available to everyone. And let's give it a price, $1,000. Now everyone can click this sign if they have $1,000 to spend and get another starter kit. And there you have it. A couple of different ways to get keys into the hands of your players, but there are tons of different ways to do it. I think we'll wrap up there. Definitely check out the Phoenix Crates website for more information on all the things you can do with Phoenix Crates and Phoenix Crates Lite. Really great Crates plugin. All right, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.